Welcome back to Factorio. Going to be doing a lot of fighting in this episode, looking at the mid-game combat options, the new tools that we have available to us for fighting now that we're through the Blue Chemical Science Pack era. And we're going to start with the armor. Power armor, always right-click in, don't left-click and spill everything all over the ground. But this is replacing our modular armor, of course. It's 7x7 seven seven grid as opposed to 5x5, five five, so almost twice the area now for putting in our equipment. We can do a lot more with that. Increased resistances, of course, and plus 10 to our inventory size bonus. A major upgrade. Then we are still on the portable solar panels for power. And I'm being conservative here again. We could take out some of these, put a little bit more of our power drawing equipment in. The personal battery Mark II. We're going to save some space here because this is five times the storage of the Mark I battery. It also takes quite a bit more resources to build, but... Once you get it, really no need for more than one of these, and we're not even going to use the full capacity of the one, I would not expect. Then I have a couple of personal RoboPorts here to help us out. Robots being able to assist us as we move around the factory and do various tasks. And then the exoskeletons increase our movement speed by 30%. You can see they're pretty sizable, and also the consumption of 200 kilowatts, so you can't go too crazy with these. But going up to a third one, very viable here, I think, at this level. And it's always very nice to move around more. Now, this is only one of my armor sets. I actually have a second one that's going to be focused on combat. And this is not something that occurred to me, but I read of somebody else doing it. It was just a complete dull moment. Why would you not do that? The equipment we're building here for our armor and the items that we're putting in our equipment grid, really not that expensive and just so much better to specialize and get the most out of what we're trying to do, whether we're in the factory or out trying to fight the enemies. So we'll switch this out and see what we've got going on on the combat side. And again, a bunch of solar panels, plenty of energy here. We could go a little bit higher. We've got the Mark II personal battery, but we're looking at the personal laser defense, which are very powerful. You can see the range of 15, and they're gonna clear the area around us. They're gonna make sure that we're not getting swarmed over by a whole bunch of enemies. And additionally, these work automatically even if you are inside a vehicle. So they're very easy to use. Now, there's another option that we have here. Actually, a few other ones, but we've got the discharge defense, and that actually has to be activated. It's not automatic. I think really for that reason alone, not worth using, but we will see it in action just to check out how it goes. We've also got our additional robots. We've got the distractor capsule to go along with the defender. And we have the energy shield. So we could move up to a Mark II energy shield with even more hit points, but I really don't think that's worth doing at this stage. It just Energy shields are superfluous, a waste of energy, a waste of space in our equipment grid, practically speaking. Let's take a look at our vehicles then before we see some of these tools in action. We have the car and now we have a tank. And the tank has more weapons. It's not as maneuverable, it's not as fast. But when it runs into something, you know it's hitting you. It can plow through spawners or worms just fine. It can plow through trees and rocks just fine. Still going to be stopped by cliffs and water, but otherwise it'll work much better. That can be a bit of an issue, though, when you're around your factory. So by demonstration, both of these currently have rocket fuel in them. Let's just get our car going at a good head of steam. And head in and see what happens. Okay, we didn't even crash through you know, this chest. We just stopped after doing some damage. Okay. Now, what about our tank? And notice, we've got ourselves a cannon. We still have the vehicle machine gun and a flamethrower. And I do highly recommend the explosive cannon shell, much better than the regular cannon shell and not much more expensive. And this just plows through things. Which again, that's great in combat. Bull in a china shop. But keep it out of the china shop. Don't just crash it through a bunch of valuable storage or production lines or well, things will happen that are not great. Let's see some of these toys in action then. I've removed everything but the discharge defense from my combat armor here, just so we can see it. And I want to come over here and trigger a good amount of enemies. Kind of waiting for them to surround them. Click to fire. And boom, you can see it's knocking them back. And it's giving them a nice amount of damage there. But again, the fact that it's not automated, 
I'm just not buying it as being useful, and that's an expensive rocket, but can also still fight on foot with rockets. I would just have liked it better if they made the discharge defense automatic since the laser defense is automatic, but it is what it is, just means I'm not going to be using it that much. Now let's switch back out here and go ahead and put in our laser defense modules. Yank that out. Put in our last one. And now let's go look at what's going to happen in this area. And as they come after us, well, guess what? Our lasers are going to make good work of them. Now, distractor capsules are strong, but they're different from the defenders in that they don't follow you. Let's just place some of them up here. And they just stay there. And they can basically take out, you know, a small area for us. They're not in range of this worm, but they just took out everything else by themselves. So that's quite nice. Then let's go hop in our tank and see what that can do for us. And notice as we drive around this, we're not going to fire at it at first. See, our laser is still firing. And then we can fire our cannon. And you can see the explosive effect there. Or maybe... We just want to, you know, get rid of the flamethrowers on our tail. Now, again, with the laser defense, I don't think that's necessary, but we can do it. And then we can say, you know what, I'm sick of shooting. Let's just come in here and uh, plow over you. There we go. Up close and personal. We're starting to get some big worms in here, some of the larger biters, but we don't really care. Because we really have overwhelming firepower at this point. And a thing I like to do here is once I'm done with a battle, I just switch to the other armor. And then repairing is done automatically by my robots. And then I switch back to the combat armor. And I go on about what I was doing. Very effective, and the tank is kind of blending in with the terrain here. But very powerful, and no problem most enemy bases we're going to come into at this stage. Here's another setup that I find quite useful as we begin to push further and further away from our factory with radar stations. And this is simply an independent, self-sufficient, expendable setup that has eight solar panels, six accumulators, couple power poles or three. And if the enemies come through and they attack this, this is all we would lose. There's no power pole connections back to the main factory for them to knock out and cause us disruptions anywhere else. So this is really a practical use for solar power, even though we have nuclear power running most of what we're doing. And if we just take a look here, we are pushing out then a little bit to the east, a bit more of a protective zone outside of our nuclear power, but quite a lot more fighting to do in the same vein as we have already seen. After about an hour and a half of fighting then, we have this newly expanded explored area and our expansion combat is complete for the moment. Now, that sounds like a lot of time, but we haven't done any fighting in quite a while, and this should secure us for quite some time as well. So we have a nice buffer over here. We can expand the bus further north. We've moved across this area. We've got water and desert, and this is going to spread pollution quite quickly over here. So we're into this area, and we can move out further anytime we need. A little bit more security over here, down here where we're going to want to build our new oil outpost, that's not going to be a problem. And then we can see over here, our oil shortage has come to pass. This is almost full, this is not full at all, and these are pretty much empty, and the pump jacks are pumping, but it's going to take, you know, several minutes now in between loads, and we just can't make it as fast as our factory is consuming it. So dealing with that will be our next task when we return. We're going to set up our oil outpost, get some more imports going, and continue on the process of scaling up the production of the factory. Thanks for watching. More Factorio coming up soon.